In addition to being his colleague here at DOC, I have always felt an additional connection with Mr. Larry Gottschall because he both graduated from DOC in the class of 1963. First picture, please. which he has held here since 1967. I first met Larry when I was a student at DOC, and this photo, photo two, from the 1973-74 Schulendingen captures a moment in Larry's life that I think is symbolic. Now, back to picture one. <laughs> but don't let this go far away. Now, as you read those comments next to Larry's senior portrait, if you know Larry, how many of those descriptors hold true of Larry 50 years after they appeared in the 63 Shulman Day? Now look specifically at the one in the middle. It says, ready to smile, and then future is uncertain. Now return to picture two. <laughs> All right. The caption tells us that Larry is taking a break from his daily chores. But it doesn't tell us what Larry is thinking about. So let's read his body language. Though the future is uncertain for all of us, someone thought that it was especially true for Larry Gottschall when he was in high school. So in this photo, might he be pondering that uncertain future? Was he wondering, back in 1973-74, 10 years after graduating from high school, wondering how long would he be staying here at Christopher Dock? Well, as John Lennon said, life is what happens to us while we're busy making plans. And now Larry has an answer to that question. 46 years of unlocking doors early in the morning and then locking them back up again at night. 46 years of trimming bushes, stripping and waxing floors, scraping and repainting walls and woodwork, some of which, like the railing on the roof of Detweiler House, is probably ignored. 46 years of providing general upkeep to the many restrooms on campus, as well as repairing the niggling acts of petty vandalism that were probably directed at someone else, but that he, in his general, gentle, patient, long-suffering manner, ended up having to deal with. During most days, school days, I don't see Larry, 
except when I see him scooting across campus in his golf cart, attending to the tasks that are written down on the daily to-do list that he has fastened to the dashboard of that cart. But once in a while, our paths cross long enough for a spontaneous conversation. And sometimes we discuss politics, and sometimes we give each other pep talks when the daily grind of life and aging seems to be wearing us down. And I always come away from those talks, those sidewalk seminars, <laughs> feeling happy and glad that I took the time to swap perspectives with Larry Gottschall. And now Larry is once again facing a somewhat uncertain future. But that future too will unfold for him, as it does for all of us, one day at a time. But I do know this about Larry Gottschall. He is a hard worker with a servant's heart. Mm. And a man who carefully guards that heart against foolish talk, a lesson that I'm still trying to learn. Larry is happiest when he's working behind the scenes. And as Mr. Weens said, he's not comfortable with even the level of attention that we're giving him here this morning. But as the Bible says, Larry, even those things which are done in secret will eventually be brought into the light. And now, Mr. Gottschall, this final photograph, I think, will reveal the secret of your longevity. And it might even explain why you, why you always ride in your car with your left leg, leg hanging out the side. <coughs> <laughs> I guess you have learned over the years that you never know when you might have to stop, make a sudden stop, and tend to an item that just might not be on that to do list. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Bishop. Larry and I have spent some time in, in uh, my office or around campus over the last few weeks talking a little bit about um, what will happen next in five minutes before chapel started. Five minutes before chapel started, and we were doing this, and all of a sudden, this memory came back to me. He said, clear as a bell, second floor, Detweiler House, speech class, and he didn't <laughs> want to give his speech. He was terrified of having to give that speech. And he was so grateful when he didn't have to give it that day, but got a little bit of a reprieve. Well, Larry, the reprieve is over. <laughs> and so we are going to ask you to come up here for a little bit. But let me say this. During his 46 years, he would have lined the soccer, field hockey, baseball, and softball field over 3,000 times. He would have drugged the softball and baseball fields over 2,000 times. He would have hung 40 plus banners in Long Acre Gym, which highlight all of your successes. He has worked in, on, above, below, through, and around every aspect of this campus. And sir, if there's anyone who deserves to hear the words, well done, good and faithful servant, it is you. Amen. Folks, after 46 years of good and faithful service, I'd like Larry Gottschall to come on up here. <laughs> Come on up here, get yourself comfortable. <laughs> a little bit of time. And actually, when he talked about the, the one line of world history, or loves world history with a question mark, he leaned over and he said, 
I had to take it twice. <laughs> I, like, I like it so much, I took it twice. <laughs> Larry, when did, when did you first hear about Christopher Dock? I was a student at uh, what is now Penn View Christian, uh, starting in my fourth grade, and I guess it was just uh, Christopher Dock. And what year did you, would you have graduated from DOC? I think that was said already. And how was your ex high school experience, especially talking about Student Administration Day? Yeah, that's something that, if, that I don't know what years they did that, but when I was a student, they, uh, the administrators, the principal, the assistant principal, uh, the uh, secretary, and the janitor, at least, someone to, to do their help with their task for the day. And, Janitor chose me to uh, help him that day. There must have been some prophetic significance to that. I certainly didn't know about it at the time, but uh, that memory is very clear in my mind. Did you ever get in trouble when you were a student here? Oh, do I have to answer that? <laughs> <laughs> I got a letter sent to my parents about something that I did one time, and uh, I don't know what my, if I got any punishment for that or not, but. <laughs> I'm good with this not going into the details, and there are also a couple of stories that you did specifically tell me that we have both agreed that we're not going to go there. <laughs> what was your first car? Well, I think Eric mentioned that as well, the 59 Chevy. I should have kept it like a <laughs> And just so some of you guys who, who do enjoy your vehicles and ladies who enjoy your vehicles, started talking about dual glass pack mufflers, his eyes lit up. I think 50 years ago you still like to make a lot of sound when you're driving, huh? You like to make a little noise. <laughs> like to park under the turn. <laughs> I, I, I agree with David. <laughs> How did you end up at working here at Doc? We got married. 